Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and welcome to this week's episode of Dear Nero. It's a weekly series here on my channel posted to every Wednesday where you guys send me in fan mail and or fan questions and I go ahead and answer the questions. It's a fun series, I enjoy doing it. We've done it for years now and uh, every Wednesday we just make a new one. It's I like it, it's a fun series. We got some Newtown Zombies gameplay for you guys. This, uh, this map in Black Ops 2 is now free. If you guys want to go ahead and download that, it's a pretty cool thing. I, I like this map, I like it a lot. The best thing about Nuketown Zombies to me is the way that they take a map like Nuketown, right? And Nuketown was a fan favorite, uh, definitely one of my favorites from Black Ops 1. I just loved it, right? And then they take it and then they just zombify it, you know? They make it so like this meteor strike or something happened, right? Everything's falling over, all the buildings are on fire, there's now rocks and stuff. And it's like, you take an awesome multiplayer map that you've played a ton of... And then you just make it zombies. I wish they would do this for more maps. Like, I'd like to see zombie firing range, you know, zombie summit, uh, anything, right? I think it's a cool idea. I like the map. The gameplay is pretty good. I hope you guys all enjoy that. But I believe it is now time to hop into this week's episode of Dear Nero with all these fancy questions. So let's hop into this with the first question he's going to write, Dear Nero. I'm a new commentator, and I'm currently rendering a 12-minute video in Windows Movie Maker from the Elgato software. It's been about half an hour already, so how long does it take you to render a video for the 40-minute long Dear Nero episodes, Ben from Las Vegas? So, Ben, people still use Windows Movie Maker. Huh. I didn't know that was still a program. But uh, these 40-minute Dear Nero's, right? I'm hoping this week's episode is going to be a bit shorter. I don't know how short it's going to be. Yet, I haven't finished making the video yet at the time he's saying this. So I don't know how long it's gonna, this particular episode is going to be. The 40-minute episodes, they really consume my entire day. So if you think of a 40-minute commentary, you don't say everything perfectly your very first time. You're going to mess up in a 40-minute commentary. So let's say, on average, it might take me an hour to record the commentary for Dear Nero, the, you know, the typical 40-minute long episodes. It takes about an hour to do that. Then you have to edit the entire thing, make sure everything, all the ducks are in a row and whatnot. That's going to take another hour. And then you got to listen to it, which could take another hour, but I usually just listen to it while I'm editing it. Um, so we're two hours in right now. Then you have to render it, which takes about two hours for me. Uh, so now we're four hours in. Then you got to upload it, so that takes another two hours. So now we're about six hours in. And then after it's done uploading, YouTube likes to take forever to process a 40-minute video. So we got another two hours there. So it takes me about eight freaking hours to make uh, those 40-minute episodes of Dear Nero. So I'm hoping that this particular episode is a bit shorter. That'd be nice. I'm hoping it's a bit shorter. I need to see, I just need to be quicker on my answers, I guess. And uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. But yeah, it takes forever. Like, Dear Nero's literally consume my entire day. Next question, he writes. Dear Nero, Hi, I am a huge fan of you, and I just got accepted into an engineering academy at my high school. I'm starting to design video games. I was wondering if you've ever took an academy, or if you were ever interested in video game design. I hope you read this. Thanks. James from California. So James, that's cool that you're going to be uh, working towards making some new, learning the ins and outs of uh, putting together video games and stuff. Me personally, I've never been interested in that. you think I would, right? If you're like, oh, you do YouTube, you play all these games, why don't you make games? Like, I don't want to learn how to code. I don't want to learn how to write stuff. I don't want to learn scripts. I'm, making video games, it's not like, it's not like you can just take like a simple software, like, uh, like, 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 picture Forge World from Halo Reach, right? It's like you can just take that and, like, all right, let's just build my map here and just put these people here, and bam, we got a video game. It's mostly coding and stuff like that, which I'm not interested in at all. Um, I might actually make a Pokemon game someday. Uh, Pokemon games are very easy to make. There's actually tons of different softwares, and there's different guide videos of walking you through uh, how it is you would make a Pokemon game. And I think that might be kind of interesting, because I think it'd be very basic, and I just think it'd be cool to have my own personalized, customized Pokemon game. Right, I can change the towns around however I want them. I can uh, I can make name all the trainers wherever I want to name them. I can uh, give them whatever Pokemon I want to give them. Like uh, as of recently, I've been starting to play in my spare time. Uh, it's called a hack, I guess, of Pokemon Fire Red Omega. And basically, what it is is Pokemon Fire Red, but a lot harder. Right? It makes it so all it's Pokemon Fire Red, so it's set in Kanto. 
but it has all of these different Pokemon from Gens 1, 2, and 3 all within the game. And the gym leaders are actually smart. They all have six Pokemon, and they're all pretty powerful. Like, for example, Misty in the second gym in Cerulean City, she has, I want to say three Pokemon usually, right? Doesn't she have like a Goldeen, a Staryu, and a Starmie usually? Well, now she has six Pokemon, all right? And she's actually smart, all right? They, they, I don't know how they did this, but they actually implemented like a logic to it. Um, her Staryu and Starmie, this might be boring for people that don't uh, <laughs> like Pokemon, but Staryu and Starmie have a natural cure ability, meaning that if you paralyze them, poison them, put them to sleep or whatever, if you switch them out and then put them back in, they don't, they're no longer have that status effect. So I'm using like Butterfree, like, all right, Big Bad Starmie's out, let's put it to sleep. I put it to sleep and she switches out and then, then puts out another Pokemon and then switches back to Starmie. Like there's actually a battle logic. Like it's Pokemon Fire Red, but it's a lot more difficult. I like that idea. So the idea of making my own cut Pokemon game would be pretty cool. There's tons of tutorial videos on YouTube of all different stuff I will need and how to do it. I may do it. It would just probably take a very long time. But other than that, I have really no interest in making video games. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, The Elder Scrolls Online is coming out soon, and I was wondering, what do you hope to be in the game, and if you could make a DLC for Skyrim, what would it be, excluding a multiplayer DLC? Uh, Edward from Australia. So first and foremost, The Elder Scrolls Online is coming out. What am I hoping to see in the game? I've actually played the beta, and uh, I don't know. I, everything I kind of wanted was there. I basically want a Skyrim feel with other people right that's that's all i really wanted in the game and that's what i got within the game and to all you people out there that were like if you're expecting the other schools online to be like skyrim you're gonna be awfully disappointed and you're like, oh shit that game is just like skyrim i played for a few hours and I'm like this game is exactly like skyrim it just has more people this is awesome this is exactly what i wanted uh as for a skyrim dlc uh i don't know i was never really a giant fan of the skyrim dlcs i didn't really care too much about them so what would I want in a Skyrim DLC? I don't know. I don't even know what I would want in a Skyrim DLC because, you know, one, I play Skyrim on the PC, therefore I can have modding stuff. And, like, there's a zombie apocalypse Skyrim uh, mod that you can download where there's just freaking skeleton zombie things running around everywhere. Like, so freaking many of them, it's absurd. Uh, I guess that would be a cool one if, you know, it could happen for people on the console and not just on the PC. I guess that's my answer. I guess a zombie apocalypse DLC for Skyrim would be kind of neat. Next question, he writes. Dear Nero, the Infected Chemstrike Saturday episode made me want to play Infected. After an hour of playing it, I noticed that it could increase your KD or lower it. I wish that the game mode didn't affect your KD because if you're one of the first to be infected, you might die 10 to 20 times. I noticed that you also win probably 9 out of 10 times. I was wondering what your thought on infected messing with your stats is, and I hope Cute Kitty sells well. Agent9400 from Georgia. So the Cute Kitties, that's a reference to a Let's Play I'm currently doing on my Let's Play channel, Game Dev, or Game Dev Tycoon. Um, I made a pet simulator game called Cute Kitties, and it's freaking sold ridiculously well. Uh, as for Infected, I made a video about Infected. It's like how to boost your stats in Call of Duty Ghosts, because Infected is ridiculous. It, re it really, really is. Um, the chances of you being Infected, pretty low, especially if you play like on the Xbox One or the PS4 where there's 18 people, right? The chances of you being the first Infected are pretty low. So other than that, you basically just camp whatever gun they give you, you get maybe three, four, or five kills, and then you die, and then you just don't do anything. Just stand right where you spawn and wait for the game to end, because nine out of ten times, you're right. It's a very rare occasion your team will lose, and you you get your five kills and your one death, then you just stand there and you spawn until the game's over, and they hand you your win. So now you just have five KD for that game, and you get a win. Like, if you want a retardedly high KD and a retardedly high win-loss, that's how you do it. You just play infected. It's not hard at all. I, I agree with you. I, I kind of wish that Infected didn't affect your stats because uh, I remember during Modern Warfare 3 uh, when Infected first became a thing, a lot of people boosted up their stats by playing Infected all the time and you know they would have like these crazy high stats and then you know just not be good players at all <laughs> and then they would dash for it out because oh my god my stats you know how long it took me to boost for these? <laughs> so I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like that Infected actually changes your kill death and your win-loss ratios. Next question he writes Dear Nero, I've been thinking about recording videos for quite some time now, but I'm too young to afford equipment. You get, this got me wondering, what age do you think that you should start YouTube? Michael from California. So Michael, 
There aren't too many younger people with successful YouTube channels. You know, um, I think the biggest one is probably Advanced UAB. It's probably the people that, like, the one of the guys that's a bit younger but still has a semi-big channel is probably Advanced UAB. Other than that, it's just, like, people just don't recept to it. And it's weird because, you know, uh, there are a lot of... Shall we just call everyone squeakers? There are a bunch of squeakers that watch YouTube, but even the squeakers don't want squeakers to be their commentators. You know, they would rather the person to be fully done with puberty, you know, make the guy, you know, 15, 16 years old. And I think about 15 or 16 is probably the age you should go with. Not just because, I mean, you could be the best player out there. You could actually be very good at speaking. You could actually just have really good content. But if you've got that squeaky voice of a younger guy, then that's just going to turn people off your videos completely. You know, that's just what's going to happen. So there are channels out there where people just don't commentate at all. Like there's a lot of Let's Play channels and stuff that just post raw gameplay. You know, of course they edit it, but it's raw gameplay with no commentary. And, you know, they post trailers and they post... There's actually channels. I've actually considered maybe doing this because there's a bunch of them that are really successful. They don't do anything. You know, they post Let's Plays and walkthrough guides of games without commentary. They just upload every new gaming trailer and they get all the search views off the gaming trailers. Like, I'm like, this is the easiest thing in the world. This, this is literally no effort video making right here. And these people have really good channels. Maybe you could do that. I don't know. But, um... Yeah, I wouldn't recommend, if you're a squeaker, to make commentaries. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, I'm currently deciding if I need to buy a PlayStation 4 with PlayStation Plus and some games for about $600 or build a custom gaming PC with Windows 7 and a monitor included for $1,000. Which would you choose and why? Thank you, Zach from Canada. So PlayStation 4 with PlayStation Plus for about 600 or building a gaming PC for 1000 Well, it really depends on what you're good at, I guess. See, gaming on the PC. Everyone has this dream, right? I've talked to a lot of people about this, right? Who have only, like, really played on consoles and stuff. Like, they're basically a console-only player. And you're like, man, I want to buy a PC where I can just have great graphics. And I don't have to pay for Xbox Live no more. And all this cool stuff. And it's like, well, if you re recognize this about PC, it's not easy to get into. If you're, if you've never been a PC gamer, don't expect to just spend twelve hundred dollars, buy an awesome PC, then take all of your Call of Duty skills over to the PC and continue to beast. You know, I'm amazing on the console. I'm freaking amazing at Call of Duty on the console, right? I am subpar bad on PC. My KD's above a one. But I'm not good. And it annoys me. It annoys me to play on the PC because when I'm playing it, right, I get killed by these guys. And I can tell these guys aren't even very good players. I'm like, you are so lucky that I barely know how to move on here or I would shit all over you. Like, that's what it's like. Like, you know you're good. Like, I, like I'll go back and play Call of Duty 4. Like, Call of Duty 4 is a game I'm really good at. And I try playing it on the PC. I can barely run and move and stuff on the PC. I can't strafe while shooting. I can't, I can't do it. I'm just not good. I've never been a PC player, right? I just can't in any, like, competitive form of a game, like um, any game that requires uh, teamwork and it's actually against other people, like Battlefield or Call of Duty. I'm just bad on the PC. I'm just bad. It annoys me because I'm actually really good at both Battlefield and Call of Duty on the console. It's because I'm used to using a controller, you know? And some people say, oh, just plug your controller into your PC. Problem solved. You don't have auto-aim assist if you do that, people. Stop with that comment. Just stop with it. It's stupid. You're stupid for commenting that. Stop it. All right? You don't have auto aim assist all right whereas the keyboard and mouse people do have auto aim assist and truth be told if you're good with the keyboard and mouse your accuracy is going to be better than somebody with control stick with joysticks on their controller so it's just a lose-lose you might as well try and just get good get good with your keyboard and mouse but it's really hard to do that it's really hard to do that especially if you've never done it before so if you're like a long time pc guy then buy your pc if you've never played PC before, I'm telling you, just buy the PlayStation. It'll be a lot better. But then again, if you're not a Call of Duty player, right? You don't play Call of Duty. You don't play Battlefield. You play single player games like Skyrim or Borderlands or just random indie games, I guess, or something like that, right? You play that kind of stuff, the PC will be fun. The PC is tons of fun. I, I play uh, a bunch of Skyrim, a bunch of Borderlands on the PC, as well as a bunch of other games, as well as like Call of Duty Zombies, because it's, like it's not like a competitive thing when I'm facing people on the PC. Um... 
if I'm playing zombies. So I, I play a ton of like custom zombies in World of War. I can do that. Right? I can do stuff like that. If you're more into co-op and single player games, then the PC can be great. But for online competitive multiplayer, and if you're not a PC guy, don't buy a PC. Bad idea. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, have you gotten your 100,000 subscribers play button? And if you have, are you going to be making a video showing it to William from Michigan? So William, no I did not. And if you guys are unaware, uh, YouTube, if you hit 100,000 subscribers, YouTube will actually send you a silver play button. It's this giant plaque thing. You can Google it, what it looks like. Like type in like YouTube silver play button 100k subs or something i don't know and you can find a picture of it right it's this really big thing it's actually a, i want to say it's maybe two feet tall something like that and it's, it's like a glass case and inside of it is this big silver play button and they'll say congratulations on hitting 100,000 subscribers near cinema and all this cool stuff uh, i haven't gotten mine yet they send them out in like bulk like when lots of people get they end up sending out like all at once and uh, I haven't even got my email yet from YouTube confirming that I hit 100,000 subs, and I did that two months ago. So I don't know, it's been a while. I don't. I, I'll get it eventually. Just don't know when. And will I be making a video of it? No, because I don't do any real life stuff. So yeah. Next question. He writes, "Dear Nero, my name is Jordan, and I just turned 15, and I got $800, and I'm just trying to start my YouTube channel up. And I was wondering what you think I should buy to make my YouTube. Thank you, and have a wonderful all nighter." Jordan. So Jordan, 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 Jordan. You know, I answered this question, but I decided to cut that out and I decided to re-answer it because I went on for way too long <laughs> trying to describe all things you may need for YouTube. $800, not the best startup money in the world. YouTube's actually way more expensive than a lot of people think it is. But I basically have come up with a YouTube starter kit that you could use. So one, you're going to, want, you're going to need a capture card, right? So just get the Elgato capture card, whatever the newest one is. I've never actually used one, but there are, a lot of people use them. They're all fantastic. And the reason I say that instead of using my capture card, which is the Avery Media Live Gamer HD, is I think you need a pretty good computer to be able to run the Avery Media because it actually is installed into your computer. Like you need to open up your PC and put this capture card in there, like install it like you would a graphics card. So I, that might be hard for some people. So just go with the Elgato capture card. Go with the blue snowball microphone. Don't get the blue Yeti. Good God, the blue Yeti is awful. Um, get the blue snowball microphone. It's a condenser microphone. Not as good as dynamic, but it's a decent microphone. You can find them on Amabay or Amabay. Wow. Amazon or eBay for about $50. All right, the, the website, like, the, if you go to the Blue website, they're going to charge, like, 100 or something for them, I think. But if you go on Amazon or eBay, you can get a brand new one off of there for $50. So you get your capture card, get the Elgato capture card, get a Blue Snowball microphone. It's a condenser. It's not as good. It'll pick up more sounds, but it's not the worst thing in the world. And I guess download Audacity. It's a free audio editing software where basically you can use to isolate background noise and remove it. And Sony Vegas is a really good editing software. You're going to need an editing software. Now, it, Sony Vegas can be super expensive. And that's that's definitely something. Apparently, there's ways to download for free on the internet, which I would know nothing about. But uh, you're going to need editing software. You're going to need uh, an audio software like Audacity. You're going to need a capture card with the Elgato capture card. And you're going to need a microphone with the Blue Snowball microphone. I guess that's, that's really enough to get you started. Um, you're going to need a better gaming PC eventually. You know, one that can render out this kind of stuff. Maybe play some PC games and stuff and record. But $800 isn't going to get you that. So hopefully that answers your question, Jordan. I tried to make that one short. But it's really hard to you know, make a really short answer to something like that. It's really hard. There's so much that goes into YouTube. It's ridiculous. Next question. He writes, Dear Nero, I have two unrelated questions for you. You said in a Chem Strike Saturday video that you recognize frequent commenters names but how many people do you think that you can name that interact with you through comments and two do you think that you'd play call of duty if you didn't have a call of duty channel based around the franchise gareth from wales so gareth the first question how, how many people do i think i recognize i recognize a ton of people i don't have a set number right i can't like name off the top of my head the people that comment on my videos a ton in the same way that i can't name every person that lives in my town but at the same time, if I see that person, I'll be able to remember their name. Same thing kind of happens uh, with YouTube here. And two, do I think I would play Call of Duty if I didn't run a Call of Duty channel? I would. Um, I like Call of Duty. I do like Call of Duty. I like Call of Duty a lot. I think YouTube has actually made playing Call of Duty more fun, actually. 
uh, because, you know, the things I do, I get to share. You know, it's not just uh, your two seconds moment. Of, like, you have a good gameplay, right? Like, this game, like, we're posting a game right here uh, on Raid, right? And it's a really close game, and I do really good. You know, if I didn't have YouTube, then this game just would have died after it happened. You know, but now I get to upload to YouTube. Most people get to see it, and it's, I like YouTube, and I like Call of Duty. Now, I definitely still play Call of Duty, even if I didn't have a YouTube channel. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, I was wondering what your job would be if for some reason YouTube were to shut down Loy from Washington. So what would my job be? Probably what anyone else would do. Just start off somewhere and then work your way up. But uh, don't count on YouTube tying anytime soon. We're going to be here a very long time, sir. A very long time. Next question, he writes. Dear Nero, I'm really enjoying your game dev tycoon playthrough on Nero's Let's Plays. And I was wondering if you were going to do a playthrough of Zoo Tycoon. I remember you saying that you liked that game and I would enjoy watching you play. Jared from Michigan. So Jared, uh, I said I liked game, or, uh, Zoo Tycoon, right? But I played it like once on a PC at my friend's house in the 90s. <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. I'm going to give that one a maybe because Zoo Tycoon or any of the Tycoon games, really, they're they're simulator games. And I like simulator games. And for whatever reason, you guys love watching Game Dev Tycoon on Year's Let's Plays. Like, that definitely has the most fan interaction of any of the playthroughs I've done as of recently. So that's a that's definitely a plus. And, you know, Game Dev Tycoon is just a fun game. I like simulator games. It's a fun game. It's $10 on Steam if you guys want to download it. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm going to give that one a maybe. I'm going to give that one a maybe to you, Jared. I'm going to give it a maybe. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, will you make a Pokemon walkthrough again, like Pokemon X or Y? This person did not leave his or her name. So this person who did not leave his or her name, I, uh, no, no I can't. Impossible. Well, it's not impossible, but it's possible. It costs like 300 something dollars, right? To be able to, you got to take, basically send off your DS to somebody on the internet, and that person, or your, your 3DS to somebody on the internet, and that person will install a capture card onto it, right? That costs a ridiculous amount of money. Like, more money than, like, a capture card that you would use for, like, Xbox and stuff. Like, it's a pretty expensive ordeal. And, you know, I've take, I usually I just don't care about the price of gaming stuff. Because when you're on YouTube, you make money on YouTube. And then you get taxed by the government because technically you're your own business. And to be able to alleviate some of those taxes, you have tax write-offs in the form of anything that is gaming. I could do this. I could do it. Do it as a tax write-off. But it's like 300 something dollars. And not to be the, the pissy pants here, but there's no way I'm going to make that back on a Pokemon X playthrough on Nero's Let's Plays. It just isn't going to happen. So, I don't know. And that, I just don't really want to. You know, I, I played through Pokemon X. It was fine. But I'm not the biggest fan of new gen stuff, right? I <laughs> I still like to play, uh, you know, Pokemon Fire Red Omega or you know Pokemon Red and Blue or you know the, the old school stuff. I'm just not a big fan of all this new fancy stuff. Like when we play Pokemon Showdown uh, with you know me and Wildcat and Cipher and you know Foxhound and all them. I, I don't even know who half the Pokemon are. <laughs> you know, I Pokemon was my childhood, but my childhood was generations one and two. You know, it wasn't. You know, generations three, four, five, and six. So I don't even know who half of these things are anymore. And just, eh, yeah, I just don't think I'll ever do one. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, I was wondering, do you think that esports has ruined public matches in Call of Duty? I can't get into a search and destroy match or a team death match without somebody saying something about their esports team. Mitchell from Texas. So Mitchell, has esports ruined Call of Duty? I'm going to say no. But it's definitely having some negative repercussions, all right? So, for starters, you know, on YouTube, a lot, some people out there, they'll look at, like, a 70-kill gameplay, and he's like, whoa, look at you, you pub stomper. And it's like, oh, are you a pro player? And the guy's like, whoa, no. And it's like, well, shut your mouth, then. You know, it's like, what the hell? Because there's people out there who get all sweaty and just sit there with swamp ass all day in their chairs and play nothing but scrims and private matches and play in an event once every three months. Suddenly, they're just better players than people that play in public matches because they sit and play in private matches against each other all day. That's stupid. I hate that idea. You know, it's a video game. Have some goddamn fun. Pro players don't have fun playing video games. <laughs> have you seen them? Go to Twitter. Go look at their Twitters. They're very angry people all the time because they sit there and play private matches on the same three maps using the same three guns against the same people over and over and over again until it's all drilled into their mind. It's stupid. I don't like the idea of... 
I like the idea of being a pro player. I would never want to be a pro player. I would never t take the time it takes to become a pro player because, like I said, you're using the same three guns on the same three maps, and you're playing and practicing like 10 hours a day. It's like, eh, that just does not sound fun at all. And then there's, like, there. of course it's cool to like, be a fan of something, right? And all these competitive Call of Duty teams, they all have fans. And these fans, you know, they're they're the toxic people. Like, oh, yeah, you're just a pub stomper. When these fans, I'm not trying to call out any names, but the fans are usually pretty shit. Just saying. I've been playing a bit of Black Ops 2 as of recently, and there's tons of people that have, like, the Optic clan tag or the Envious clan tag, you know, and they're like, oh, yeah, pro players. And then you look at their stats, and, like, they're awful. It's like, not not the player. Like, the play, the fan is awful, not the player. The, not the actual players. Not the Optic people or the Envious people. Of course, they're very good. But, um, you know, these people, like, they're not even that good, but yet they talk shit to people. And the goddamn scuff controllers. Lord have mercy on me. I hate those things. I hate them with every fiber of my being. I hate scuff controllers. Ever since, like, Call of Duty kind of, like, especially since Black Ops 2, when they really start implementing this whole uh, eSports thing, and we're really, you know, trying to push competitive Call of Duty to the next level with Call of Duty Black Ops 2, everybody and their freaking mother owns a scuff controller. It is absurd. Every time I see somebody, they're jumping. Every time. You know, back in my day, back in my day, Modded controllers were looked down upon. You were a loser if you had a modded controller, but now everybody has one. People are like, whoa, scuff controllers are not modded. Bullshit, they're not modded. You can do stuff with a scuff controller that you would not be able to do with a normal controller. That is a modified controller. You can jump and aim at the same time. You can't do that on a normal controller. It's impossible, unless you're like playing some retarded, crazy claw or something. Normal people can't do that, but yet you're paying money to, with the, to, be able to, have, to be able to do that. It's stupid. Modded controllers are stupid. Why people like scuff controllers are stupid. If you use a scuff controller, you're automatically a bad player in my mind. Automatically. Because chances are, I'll do better than you. And my 360 controller I'm looking at right now is old as hell. It's, the thumbsticks are all worn down to nothing. It's dusty as hell, and I don't care. That's what I use. You know why? Because it's a real controller. I'm not paying for a modded controller. A bunch of losers. Next and final question he's going to write, Dear Nero, you mentioned yet again in your last Dear Nero about how you started SB with a group of friends. What happened to all of them? Do they still play? I usually just see you playing with Foxhound or subscribers most of the time rather than Grizzly, Deadly, Skinny, Swami, or any of the other people in the original SB. I know you still play with Toucan, however. Marcus from England. So Marcus, uh, Team SB, like I said, it was like a group of my friends that we all just decided to have like the same name, right? That's kind of like what we did. And what happened to all them? We're all older. You know, we're not like, we're, we're not the squeaker squad. We're all relatively older people. You know, I'm 22. Grizzly is 20, 23 or 24. I don't know. Uh, Swami is 25. Uh, Toucan is 25. Cardinal is 21. Um... I think Deadly might be 18 now. I'm not sure. I'm like, we're all older. We're all older people. And we all just kind of moved on. A lot of us moved on. You know, it's basically down to me, Cypher, and occasionally Toucan. You know, um, Mike, or, well, his name's Grizzly, but real, real life his name's Mike, I know him. Um, he's got two kids now and a full-time job. You know, Swami has three kids and a full-time job. Um, Cardinal has a full-time job and a girlfriend and... You know, a lot of it, we're all older, and a lot of us are going out like Vicious. He went off to college, and, um, you know, a lot of us just go to college, or, you know, we have, now have jobs, or some people are starting up families and stuff, and maybe some of us just lost interest in gaming. Team SB used to be just a group of people, and we had, like, freaking 12 of us, so much to the point that we would have to break up into two squads, because there was always too many of us online, and we would just run through Black Ops 1, and... Uh, tons of fun. It was a great time, a great part of my life was playing with all those guys all the time, but... Life goes on, people get older, and things happen. And now, basically, the only people that really consistently play are, uh, you know, me and Cypher um, and Toucan. Uh, we're the only ones left. And the only reason I'm still here, because, you know, if I weren't on YouTube, I'd be that guy out, out there with a full-time job. You know, I might be that person. No, I wouldn't be the person starting the family. <laughs> I don't want a family. <laughs> I never want a family. But, uh, yeah, I'd be the guy out there with a full-time job. I'd be the one that, you know, couldn't play most of the time. You know, Team SB was cool. But a lot of us still aren't here. Some of us just got to move on. Just like I need to move on from this video. 
I hope this wasn't a very long one. And I'm looking at the timestamps. Yes, this is going to be another goddamn long one. <laughs> it's not that I don't like making the long episodes of Dear Nero. It's that, like I said in the beginning of the video, it's like, man, it's going to take me an hour to edit this and listen to it. After I've already spent this hour putting it together, you know, and then it's going to take another two hours to render it, and then another two hours to upload it, and then another two hours to process it. It just takes so long. I hope you guys all enjoyed this week's episode of Dear Nero, and if you did, please be sure to leave a rating where you guys feel it deserves. If you guys like to send in your questions for next week's episode of Dear Nero, simply send me a personal message here on YouTube. Make the title of the message Dear Nero, and if it's a good question, an entertaining question, and above all, a question I have not yet answered before. I will do my best to go ahead and do that for you guys. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to leave a rating. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day.